Hey everyone, welcome into another episode of Rip and Rip. Today I am joined by Toronto Blue Jays pitching prospect Jake Fishman. Jake, please say hello to everyone. What's up? Pleasure to be Jake, here. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it so much. For those not familiar with your work, can you give us a kind of a quick rundown of who you are and why you are the most underrated pitching prospect in baseball right now? <laughs> I don't know if I'd say that, but um I'm Jake. I uh, went to Sharon High School in Sharon, Massachusetts. Uh, that's where I grew up and ended up going to Union College in Schenectady, New York. Shout out Schenectady. <laughs> 518. <laughs> yeah. Um, and from there, my junior year, I got drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays. And that was in 2016. And now, um, last year I was in A with the New Hampshire Fisher Cats. Um, the double A affiliate for the Blue Jays. And this year I'm uh, on team sitting at home currently <laughs> and waiting. Well, you bring that up and um, that's you know a good transition. Like how has, obviously everything got turned upside down for you and a lot of people two-ish months ago. So how has these last like two-ish months been for you? They've been uh, kind of nice. I mean, obviously like, I want to be out playing baseball, but I've just been trying to take advantage of the, the time and um, just like do the things that I wouldn't normally be able to do right now, because this is the first time I've been home uh, in my hometown for like maybe seven, eight years. So it's 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 strange time to be here, but um, just enjoy trying to enjoy it and uh, stay ready for the season. That's awesome. So what does your day to day look like as far as? staying ready for sure uh so every day i will play catch um i have a awesome catch partner that will catch my bullpens and everything um and then uh just like before i play catch i'll do a uh, warm-up where i do corrective exercises for my body um and then if i have a lift that day i usually lift two three times a week with the minimal equipment that i have here just trying to get you know come up with creative stuff that um, they can still help me get better. And then, um, and then that's about it after I play catch and lift and all that stuff. Um, it's just kind of my day to enjoy. That's, that's cool. Um, so when you're kind of having to do, make, figure out the makeshift routine with the limited equipment you have, I guess, what has been the easiest part or hardest part? Because it sounds like, you know, catch is catch. I feel like to an extent, but I can imagine limit, limited equipment could be a challenge. Yes, it's, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful that uh, about, uh, it might have been five years, five or six years ago, I did an internship at Cressy Sports Performance, and they're a really big um, strength and conditioning facility for baseball. The founder, one of the founders, Eric Cressy, just got a job with the Yankees as the, the head trainer. And, um, there's also a pitching coach, former pitching coach from Cressy that is now the bullpen coach for the Yankees. So uh, I've just learned a ton from them over the, the past five years and my internship there. So the strength side, I've, I feel very confident in. It's, it's uh, not so difficult to create a routine from the stuff that I have just based on that background. Um, for me, I think the most difficult part has been uh, like focusing um you know every day trying to like bring the the maximum focus to catch and lifting every day because it's such a weird time it's like there's no now we're getting close to uh having an answer of like whether we're gonna actually play or not you know the rumor is maybe early june um but initially it's like we're here we have there's no time frame we have no idea what's going on and it was hard to to just like be focused and hone in on like, Oh, got to be ready for this day. And, you know, got to push hard every day, but definitely improved on that over time. Well, you know, hopefully everything gets resolved soon. And you have answers um, before all of this kind of took a turn. You had a, a pretty busy off season too. You want to talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah. What did I do this off season? That was so busy. <laughs> I don't know. You spent some time overseas. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> that's a, that's a very good point. Um, yeah. So this off season, 
I was put on the Team Israel roster. So I ended up going over to Israel and got my citizenship there. So I am eligible to play on the the Olympic team, which is just insane to me. Um, I was a reserve for the World Baseball Classic in 2016, um, but I didn't end up getting a, to the chance to go and play with the team. So um, I'm just really excited for next summer when we can actually play again. That's awesome. Um, so kind of what inspired you to actually make the trip over there and get the citizenship and really go through the entire process? Right. So they, uh, they actually gave me a phone call after the team had qualified for the Olympics and I'd been following the team the whole time, just kind of like watching and, and being really excited. And then they, you know, probably a week later, they, one of the coaches called me and um, it was actually somebody I'd previously played against in college. Who's now a coach for team Israel. And, and he was like, Hey, you know, we think uh, you might be a good fit for this team. We want to, we want you to consider getting uh, your citizenship or making Aliyah and, uh, and becoming a part of the team. So uh, immediately I was like, definitely, I would love to do that. Um, and then from there, it's just planning. There was a lot of planning that, that went into the trip and getting all the documents ready. And, um, but once we got there, it was super smooth sailing. They were very friendly um, and it was just, it was awesome. That's fantastic. What was your favorite part of the trip? There were so many, so many good parts. The food was awesome. And the food was kind of similar to what we eat here in the U.S., but it, it just was, like, very clean. It tasted so good. Um, and just the places, like, there are um, – the Dead Sea was really nice. You can float in the water and – uh, is yeah, cause, just because there's so much salt there, and uh, that was a, a cool experience. And and traveling, it, it was just everything was amazing. That's awesome. Well, so while well, I've got you here, um, you also have, as I do, a box of 2019 Tops Archives. Yes. that we're gonna open. Um, so I don't know how big you are in the cards and stuff, but Archives is one set that I really enjoy. Uh, personally, just because of how they mix some of the retro design. Yep. Um, why don't we uh, just dig in here and see who we can pull out? Cool. All right. Let's see what we got. How many packs we got in here? I think it's seven, and then you get some coins. Yeah. I see the coins. Get coins for the end. Okay, I'm just gonna open this. Fiftieth <laughs> anniversary of the Montreal Expos cards. Yeah, I think those will be pretty cool. Yeah. So let's go ahead and crack open pack one. Cool. All right. So we got Lucas. Uh, Giolito, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Oh. Jose Barrios. Uh, we got Tony Perez. Okay. There's a classic. <laughs> yeah. We got, what did that say? Lou Boudreau. Oh, you did better on pronunciation than I did. <laughs> Mel Ott. Mel Ott, Okay. Uh, we got Orlando Cepeda. Nice. My pronunciation on these are probably horrible. We got Carlos Santana <laughs> and Jesus Aguilar. All right. So I have Robbie Alomar. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you had a chance That's to meet awesome. him yet or anything like that? Um, yeah. Yeah, he's usually... Uh, Pretty sure he's usually floating around spots just uh being a, a goof <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah also, ramon loreno mm -hmm. acuna he's pretty good oh wow yep um brad keller nice another guy who's pretty good ichiro wow <laughs> wow 
Why'd you get the good pack? <laughs> yeah, right? A couple of okay guys in here. Um, and Kyle Tucker. Nice. And you're going to have to help me with this one because I always screw it up. Uh, Johnny Miz? Mize? Uh, I like- yeah, I think it was Mize. Mize? And okay. I'm not the person to ask for these name pronunciations. <laughs> I'm so bad at them. It's all good. Who is your um, favorite player right now in uh, in baseball, if you had to pick one? In baseball right now? Ooh. Uh, that's a tough question. I Like, for me personally, I love watching the Blue Jays players that I've seen, like, rise up the ranks and are now playing in the major leagues. Like, Danny Jansen, he's uh, such an awesome person. Uh, I got to play with him for like a few games when he was rehabbing with us. And then, um, you know, he just skyrocketed up the ranks after that. And uh, so probably Danny Jansen, right? Yeah. The teammate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, teammate. That's awesome. Uh, do you have any uh, fun teammate stories? Because you came in like to the Blue Jays right around the same time, like Vlad and Bichette and Biggio were coming in right. too. Do you have yep. any fun stories with those guys? Or was it just kind of you stayed in your lane and did your thing? Uh, they, well, so I played my my very first season with Bo Bichette, and it was just like crazy to watch. Even at 18 years old, he came in and was just dominating the the um, GCL Gulf Florida Gulf Coast League, like rookie ball. He so he played for one month. He ended up getting appendicitis, and he missed two months. And when he came back. He was still leading the league in RBIs. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He was just like insane. He put together a good one. Yeah. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah. If I um, if I pull a card of his out of here, I'll be sure to put him on my team. <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay. You want right. to go on pack number two here? I got Harrison Bader. We got Austin Riley. Okay. Max Scherzer. Good okay. pull. Yep. We've got Ryan Sandberg. Yeah. He's pretty good maybe, too. Maybe he's a fellow um fellow Jewish man. <laughs> Brandon Lowe. Okay. Luis Urias. Uh oh, Manny Machado. Yeah, not, not bad. bad. Yeah, he's pretty good. And Cedric Mullins. Cedric Mullins. Yeah. I have Jimer Candelario. Mm. Robbie Cano. <laughs> You're getting some good good guys. Yeah. Scooter Jeanette. No slouch. Eddie Rosario. Mm. Um Colin Moran. So funny Colin Moran story. When he was in um, Double A with the Astros organization, I was at a game that uh, he was playing in, and I accidentally called him Chris to his face. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> act. Um, Carlos Santana oh. and Jesus Aguilar. Oh, one more. Oh, look who else I got. Manny Machado. Yep. Solid. Um. How did so, he react when you called him Chris? <laughs> he didn't even react to it. Like, yeah, it's funny. I think he was impressed that anyone was even like asking for his attention because at the time, the other people on that team were like Correa, uh, Josh Hader. Like, it was like right. So he was not the star of that show, and I think he was just like, "Hey, what's up?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do number three. Yeah. Okay. We got Larry Dubby. Okay. Bruce Suter. Eloy Jimenez. Eloy, that's a good one. <laughs> we got Ken Griffey Jr. All right. No. Put him aside. Okay, career. <laughs> yeah. Um, what? Who else? We oh, Roger Clemens. All right. Yep. Joey Votto. 
pretty good. Caught up. His pop up and, like fun facts are ridiculous. Like he's popped up like twenty. Yeah, years right. <laughs> yeah, that's just <laughs> ridiculous. Um, and then my last one is Orlando Arcia. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So I've got Bob Gibson. You may have heard of him. Hi. <laughs> Uh, Chipper Jones, may have heard of him. <laughs> yeah. Luis Urias. Tommy, you've heard this name before. Ty Cobb. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> George Kell. Um, you may know this guy personally. Uh, Rowdy Teles or Tellez. I can't. Yeah, yeah, Rowdy Teles. I do know him actually. Another good guy. Um, he's a beast. He hits tanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of tanks, um, you know, you weren't a slouch as a hitter when you were in college. Do you <laughs> miss it at all? Do I miss hitting? Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. So I've been trying to get some ABs for the whole four years I've been in pro ball. And I've been – or I've just even been trying to get some batting practice. And so last year was the first year that I had taken batting practice on the field. And at the end of the season, they ended up giving me an at bat. <laughs> and that is like unheard of for a pitcher that is not supposed to be hitting. Like that is not supposed to be happening. And um, I ended up striking out. I was I was so upset. I was like, this is my one chance ever <laughs> to get an at bat in my entire life. But it's on the books. Nobody can take that away. That's true. Um, yeah. Was it a three pitch strikeout, or did you put up a? No, plate? it wasn't. I I feel like I did pretty good at the plate. I have some video I could probably send you. Uh, first pitch took for a ball, and then. Uh, swung and foul tip. Then he came up and in on me, took it for a ball. Another foul tip on a fastball. And then he threw me a nasty change up that I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> Couldn't do it. Yeah, it was tough. <laughs> well, you know, the next one will be better. I have faith. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm looking forward to my next at bat. I was surprised, honestly, uh, that I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to like see the baseball very well because in college, you know, maybe we'll see 90 occasionally at the D3 level. Uh, but, you know, this guy was on like 92, 94. Uh, and surprisingly, like it wasn't really that much different to see. It, it definitely got up on you more, which is why I like I had trouble catching up to it you haven't seen live pitching in four years, you know, it's going to be tough to catch up to 92, 94, but I was surprised. Well, it, it gave me hope for <laughs> one day to, to get a hit. <laughs> You'll have your Bartolo moment. <laughs> yes, exactly. All That's right. Awesome. Got All right. Next yeah, next one? yeah. Jorge Posada. Okay. Yeah. Kevin Kramer. Nolan Ryan. You know, he threw a couple good games. Yeah, eh, just a couple. Uh, a couple good games, I'm going to cut you off here. 
Okay. You threw a no hitter in your second college start. What was yes. that? That was like uh, crazy. <laughs> I, you know, it's like you don't expect to do that. And to be fair, like we were playing the worst team in the league, and it was the most underwhelming celebrated no hitter ever. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> You know, I got the last out, and like we're just like, oh, okay, I guess the game's over. <laughs> right. Freshman, no yeah, hitter. who's this? Who's this guy again? <laughs> so, but it was it was just it was fun. It was it's nice to have a no hitter under my belt, at least one. That's awesome. Yeah, awesome. Um, next guy is Hal Newhouser. Okay. Mike Trout. You know, he's pretty damn good, too. Yeah. Josh Bell. Good. Josh Bell, okay. Yeah. And Noah Syndergaard. Syndergaard, all right. Yeah. So I'm rocking with uh, Mr. Duke Snyder. Ooh. Justin Verlander. Nice. Josh Donaldson. Mm, he's crazy. <laughs> he's solid. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually met him in Atlanta last year. He was fun with the fans. He was awesome. Yeah, he's he's. Uh, I've met him a few times, and he's a, he's honestly a great person. He's always willing to sit down and talk with the hitters and kind of like talk through mentality. But he's a crazy person. <laughs> he's like insane. He's not a, he's not afraid of anybody or anything. He's you know he's ready to take ninety five to the face every time he goes up to the plate. Which he's got to be to be a respect. I know exactly. Oh wow! Well. I also have Walker Bueller. Oh, nice. Manny Margot. Another Ichiro. Jose Ramirez, and this guy you may have heard of, Babe. Mm. Respect the babe. <laughs> cool. Uh, my next pack got a Mookie Betts. Okay, love him. Freddie Freeman, and we got Justin Smoke. Nice. Yep. I actually haven't met him um, before, even though he's on the he's on the Jays. But um, I've heard good things. We got Chris Sale. Not bad. Cody Bellinger. Okay. Yeah. Justin Upton. Jose Ramirez. And Babe Ruth. Okay. Yeah. This is like the second episode in a row. I've noticed some very similar cards out of these boxes. Right. Yeah. That's how they work. <laughs> I feel it like. makes me up a little bit. Um, speaking of mixing it up, what is your... Um, what are you throwing these days as far as like your repertoire? What's um what's coming off that arm? I've really honed in on two pitches and it's a sinker and a slider. So the idea is you get one that goes like that and one that goes like that. And so they have to, you know, guess which way it's going. And if they guess correctly, then they're probably gonna get it. But if they don't, then uh then that's what I do. So I've also been working on uh, throwing up in the zone more. Our analytics people are are really pushing a lot of people to get it up in the zone. For me, since my ball sinks a lot, it's really just like a once, maybe an at-bat, maybe once an inning that you'll go up and try and strike somebody out on it. Because if they're, for me, everybody's like trying to lunge down and out to, to get my stuff because it's always like sinking down or, or going down. So if I can uh, mix one up, then it's like they it's too hard for them to adjust to get to it. So it uh, it kind of sneaks by them. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. 80, 88 um, bio. Is, is, 88 bio? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jamie Moyer hung around topping out at 79 for a few years. So if it works, it works. That, yeah, that is outrageous. <laughs> what is like um, – I can imagine. So you went to obviously kind of a small D3 school and then you got to pro ball. How has like the amount of information and the 
How has the amount of information, the coaching progressed as you've progressed through the ranks? Right. The, the amount of information has skyrocketed that we get. We get analytics on ourselves and on the hitters. I try to not look at the stuff on myself because it's just like it, it gets too involved uh, in what you're trying to do. You, you don't need analytics to tell you what you should be doing as a pitcher to be successful. You At this point, you understand what you need to do. But what is very helpful is using the analytics on the hitters. So the one of the most important ones that I look at is first pitch swing percentage. And that tells you so much about a hitter. It's, it tells you if they're super aggressive, if you can just throw one down the middle against them and they're not going to swing no matter what. And it just it makes profiling a hitter a lot easier. So, so are you um... – do you prefer an aggressive first pitch guy or one who's just going to let you groove one in? Depends. On, it depends on the hitter. I don't mind aggressive people as long as you know they're aggressive. Because if you don't know they're aggressive and you leave one out over, over the plate, they're always going to smash it because that's they're just gearing up for anything over the plate. But if you know they're aggressive, you can just throw sliders down or sinkers way down and they're going to still swing and either – completely miss or they're just gonna hit it straight into the ground so makes sense as long as, yeah as long as i have the analytics on them it doesn't you know it doesn't bother me either or okay who's the uh toughest hitter you faced mm, toughest hitter i've faced he's a so I'll, i'm gonna name a guy so he's a, a big donkey lefty and He's, I would appreciate it if you referred to me by name. <laughs> and he he has hit me very well over the years that I've faced him. His name is Derek Hall. And okay. I don't know I don't know why, you know, lefties are supposed to be like my my specialty. I'm supposed to get them out no problem, but for whatever reason, this guy he's just got my number. He keeps plowing balls off the wall against me <laughs> like what the i don't understand this guy Duh. but He's, that's in Derek hall the nemesis yes exactly <laughs> next time i'm if you're watching this Derek hall i'm coming for you <laughs> if Derek hall is watching this please come on and do an episode with us yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so i got my next pack here um michael chavis yep uh goose gossage pictured with the oh. Padres. Wow. You know, this guy is okay, too. Mr. Hank Aaron. Yep. Um, Otani. <laughs> Dion. Yep. Uh, Joey Votto, Arcia, and Josh Bell. <laughs> so. Yep. Repeats. Ones. Yep. All right. I got Will Myers. Jose Urania. Matt Olson, Evan Longoria, Kevin Pillar, love him, he's an animal, Willie Adams, and Ricky Henderson. You know, he stole a base or two. Yeah, and Roberto Clemente. Another guy who was pretty good. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm putting people aside for my team pile i think i might have too many people <laughs> it's gonna be tough <laughs> to pick at the end yeah it's tough drafting people um yeah so give us some insight on like are there any names out there that you think they're gonna be big once they get their shot and they're just flying under the radar right now i think you can appreciate that based on your career path but can you throw a name out there's like watch out for this guy because He's gonna hit the ground running. Yeah, I, it's there's so many. It's, so especially in the Blue Jays organization, our minor leagues are stacked, especially on the pitching side. And and I have like a really good sense of the relievers just because I spend so much time with them, and and we've just like been rising through the ranks together. The relievers that we have are gonna be dominant. We just. There's way too many guys throwing a hundred that we have, and 
one guy in particular is Brian Baker, who made it up to AAA last year, and he is just un- he's an animal. He's up to a hundred and two. Um, he's got an unbelievable changeup, and he's just he's yeah tough to, tough, tough to put in tough to put into words. So um, it's funny. Obviously, I'm a Mets fan. You know that. Um, when the Stroman trade was going down last year, I have to admit, right. I was very much praying that you would be lumped into that trade. <laughs> um, yeah. No no offense to anyone. I was just like, please, that'd be amazing. Um, yeah. But it sounds like I maybe need to pray for Brian Baker. Instead. Yes. <laughs> you should. He'll be a closer okay. one day in the bigs. All right. Um, where do you see yourself when you get your shot? Um, and I say when because um, this is a positive, positive show, and we're gonna right. will it into existence. Um, yes. So when you get your shot, what do you see your role being? It's tough to say. Whatever they see for me is is the is really the answer. But uh, I hope it's you know as big as a role that they want to give me. The usually the way it works is whenever you get moved up, you kind of go back to the bottom of the totem pole um, and then you have to prove yourself to move wherever they're going to move you. Uh, so, you know, initially I imagine that they'll use me as a lefty specialist type person with the new rules where you have to face three batters. You know, it's, I'll obviously have to end up facing righties, but I'm sure there will be opportunities where it's like come in, face lefty to end the inning. And that's the day's work. But they've been they've been preparing us in the minors to get the righties out because we've had that rule in the minor leagues. Uh, I can't remember how many years we've had it, but you know, it, we've been we've been getting used to it. So, so it's not an insane change for you, right? What is an insane change for me is the new lefty pickoff move that they're trying to get rid of. Oh no! How can they do that? <laughs> they're uh, in in high A and below. I'm pretty sure this year they're taking away the lefty pickoff move. So it's like everybody. Yeah. That's just crazy to me. (laughs) I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, Yeah. When I was playing um, like, like Babe Ruth ball and stuff like that, there was a guy in um, our league. He was a lefty. He had the dirtiest pickoff move. And um, I played first for him a couple times. And I was the only one who did this too. He would get his first baseman confused. And right. it was just one of the nastiest pickoff moves I'd ever seen. Yeah. Um, so now they take stuff like that away. I mean, that's, uh, that's not fun to me. Right. They're trying to get the running game going. That's yeah. true. Get some excitement. That's fair. Yeah. All right. So I've got my next pack here. Mr. Andrew McCutcheon. Mm. Patrick Corbin. Nice. Steve Severino. Willie Stargell, Nolan Arenado, Mookie Betts, and Cedric Williams, and Roger Clemens. Nice. All right. I'm on my last pack here. All right. Kyle Schwarber and Drelton Simmons. Okay. Phil Rizzuto. Ah, finally, in Ichiro. <laughs> um, we got Harmon Killebrew. Okay. Nick Markakis. And finally, we got Corey Seager. Corey Seager. Yep. He's, you know... I like Corey. He's... um. I watched him in the minors a bit. I, I genuinely think he's a nice person, and I really wish that he can return kind of that form he had once he when he jumped up into the league. So right, we'll see. Um, so kind of speaking of, um, we're pivoting a little bit. When did you actually like? When did it hit you that you know I might get drafted? I might, I might be able to like chase this and take a shot at doing playing professional baseball. What was that moment and what was that like for you? Right. Uh, so I think I realized after my freshman summer college ball season. 
So we had my freshman year at college, we had just won the Liberty League championship. And then I went on to play in the Futures League for the Brockton Rocks. And there, there's a bunch of D1 guys in that league. And I was still being successful. And at the end of the summer, I was like, wow, you know, there's not really that much of a difference between Division I players and D3 players. Like the biggest, sure, D1 players might be slightly bigger, um, but like the biggest difference is that their work ethic is a lot more and they're just super consistent with everything that they do. And so once I realized that, I was like, I think I have a shot. And then between my freshman and sophomore year of college, I put on 20 pounds and my velocity jumped up. I was like low 80s and prior to that. And then it jumped up to, I think I topped out at 89 my sophomore year. And so at that point, I was like, you know, I'm getting pretty close. I think I think I might be able to do it. Um, there wasn't really any point where I was like, I'm for sure getting drafted. Even on draft day, it was like yep. up until my name was called, I had no idea. So When your name was called, I mean, you were a late round pick. Was it just kind of sitting at home and getting that phone call? I was actually driving home from the Cape because um, I was playing in the Cape Cod League. And so, and we had a rain out. So I was like, oh, I'll drive home. It's draft day and whatever. Uh, so I was on my way home and I got a phone call from my agent who originally earlier in the day, he had said, oh, I talked to a couple teams. They said they aren't sure yet, but they're looking at you and it might happen. So um, on the car ride home, he called me and he's like, hey, we just took a deal. And I was like, oh my God. And then, He's like, okay, I got to go call other people. So he hung up, and about five seconds later, um, the scout that signed me ended up calling me. And he's like, we just signed you. I'm like, oh, my God, I know. <laughs> so, at, yeah, and then after that, um, they called my name while that was happening, so I didn't actually hear it. And then it was like phew, an insane explosion of, of messages and phone calls from people just you know all my friends and family were were listening and and seeing so it the was phone pretty literally awesome blew up. what's that the phone literally blew up yes exactly that's yeah. awesome um so i'm gonna just gonna like i'm gonna blow a little smoke up, up your rear here like okay. i can see where early on you realizing that i have a shot at this i can understand that um so freshman year you throw a no hitter on, in your second start solid you finish the year with a 229 era while batting 400 um <laughs> not bad then your sophomore year you come back and lapped at with a 148 era and a 477 batting average and then you know just to top it off you come in in 2016 lead all of college baseball with a 0.41 era and hit 361. You really slacked in the hitting department that year. Yes, I know. <laughs> like at any level, that's absolutely insane. So I'm I'm glad that people like recognize the potential that was there in that like small town in New York. Um, that scout that signed you, had you met him or had a lot of interactions with him, or was it kind of just like a thanks for the shot, stranger? Yeah, so I hadn't actually met him <coughs> prior to the draft. And um, I didn't get to meet him for a while, probably until maybe a year after I, I played my first season. Um, but yeah, it, with the scouts, it's sometimes they will talk to you. It's very rare that I found at least that most people didn't talk to me. Sometimes they would call uh, my head coach from Union and talk to him, maybe get my email so that they could send me like some form to fill out. And then... Um, yeah, aside from that, you know, they don't really talk to you. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a great surprise. And um, yeah. <laughs> you've been making the most of that opportunity. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it was actually, it's it funny. I remember that the Blue Jays, the scout that signed me, he came to like my two best games that I had during the season. Right. So that, that obviously helps a lot. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it works out like that. But you had a pretty good season, so here's a pop quiz for you. Um, what do 
Jake Fishman, Will Craig, Dakota Hudson, Joey Lucchesi, Kyle Lewis, Nick Senzel, Nick Solak, Kyle Wright, and Pete Alonzo have in common? I have no idea. <laughs> you were all on the 2016 Golden Spikes Award midseason watch list. Really? Which, when, like, you kind of look at those names, it's – like, I mean, what is it like to, like, Pete Alonzo is one of my favorite players now, obviously. Yeah. You were in those conversations when you were in college. Like, people were speaking about talent levels in the ballpark, the same ballpark as him. That's insane right. to me. Like, I mean, I just, like, I'm beyond impressed with what you've been doing, and you know, I wish you nothing but continued success. Now I'm going to stop kissing your butt, and I'm going to show my <laughs> um, Glaber. Yeah. The other Seeger, Mr. Kyle. Yep. Not Bob, though. Um, <laughs> topical. Nick Senzel. Oh. Um, Blake Snell. Ichiro, number three. Wow. Ricky Henderson. Yep. Clementi. And Killebrew. All right. So we've opened up everything. Do um, you want to try to build like your your ideal lineup and share that out. Sure. I'm going to take a second and, uh, take and your time through this. Yeah. All right. So you got your roster. Yep. All right. Who you got? All right. Let me read them off for you. Start with the pitchers. I got four. Cause I couldn't decide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got Chris sale. Tough to say no to him, especially cause we're both goofy lefties throwing wise. Uh, Nolan Ryan, he's a beast. Max Scherzer and Roger Clemens. Now, Roger Clemens, so his son, Casey Clemens, he he plays for us. So he actually uh, came to one of our games one day and start and uh, spoke to all the pitchers, um, just like giving us advice and and motivation and stuff like that it was really he's a very good speaker so it was, it was a cool cool thing to listen to yeah you grew i mean what's it like you meet someone in like a professional setting as like like yeah there's a mentor coach relationship there but like he's also kind of a colleague at this point and you these are right. people you grew up watching what's that like it's it's strange you you really understand like the wealth of knowledge that they have at the at this point in their life they just they know so much more than you do <laughs> they've experienced so much more on the baseball field so they just seem to have all the right answers for what you need basically oh, that's awesome yeah all right so um, we've got right. in your rotation what's the rest of your lineup looking like um we got kevin pilar in the outfield and then we got ricky henderson and ken griffey jr Top-notch outfielders. That's not bad. Yeah. Uh, my DH is Babe Ruth. Solid. Had to fit him in there somewhere. Of course. Uh, Justin Smoke at first base. Represent the Blue Jays. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ryan Sandberg, my Jewish okay. brother. <laughs> uh, I got Chris Bryan at third. Okay. And then uh, Evan Longoria also at third. That doesn't right. make sense. Where'd my shortstop go? You're just gonna put Chris Bryant at short. <laughs> yeah, I'll put I'll put Chris Bryant at short. <laughs> and that's my lineup. All right, so I've got Bob Gibson's my starting pitcher. Oh, I got in my lineup is Ichiro in center, Mookie Betts in left, Harmon Killebrew at first. Hank Aaron in right field, mm. Babe Ruth at DH, Chipper at third, Robbie Alomar at second, Josh Bell at catcher at a position. I feel like he would at least try, though. Um, <laughs> and then yeah. Machado short. Nice. I realize I didn't put my guys in a lineup, but that's okay. <laughs> um, all right, you want to open the coins and see what we have? Yeah, I can play. I forgot about the coins. <laughs> so what are these like? Um, there's pictures of them on the side of the box. They're literally just coins with pictures of players on them. There's no other way to describe oh. them. Oh, they're kind of like a bottle cap almost. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. 
Oh my god, you are <laughs> the, what these packs? <laughs> no. Oh, who you got? That's funny. Um, yeah, so I have Glaber, and that's two in a row of these that I've had where I got really? Glaber. But then this last one is different, and I'm not mad about it. Mr. Mike Trout. Oh, that's a good one. I ended up getting Juan Soto. So pretty <laughs> solid. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's pretty good. And then um, Carlos Correa. Correa, okay. Yeah. Solid. Um, so I guess I'll ask you like a couple questions now that we're done opening things. What was um, – your favorite card that you pulled out of there? Um, ooh, there was a lot of them. Probably the pit, the pit, the starting pitchers that I pulled out, uh, like Clemens. I, I just like I have a lot of connections to those guys. Um, whether it's through Cressy, like we just train at the same facility, or um, you know, got to meet them in person, like Roger Clemens. So that's awesome. Yeah. So thank you again so much for your time today. Um, I've, I've had a lot of fun. Hope you've had too. It's been amazing catching up. I think the last time I saw you, we were playing beer pong in my basement. It's been a <laughs> while. <laughs> yes, it's been a while. <laughs> um, one last question before I let you go. Um, if you had to like throw a name out there as someone you think would um, enjoy doing this with me, um, who would that be? Ooh. Um. Man, there's a lot of people. I just can't think of anybody off the top of my head now. <laughs> uh, you're good. Um, we'll hold out, and um, you can shoot me a note on the side. Um, but yeah, one last I'll thing. have to send you a message on that one. <laughs> that works. Um, one last thing, though. Um, you were, you're being gracious enough to uh, donate a couple of signed baseballs uh, yep. for some social media giveaways. So um, we're going to give one away on Twitter and one away on uh, YouTube. So... When this video gets posted, the way you can win on YouTube is comments um, on the video when you think the Blue Jays will get their first win of the 2020 season. Mm. Leave that comment, um, and that's we'll pick a random entrant there to win one of the signed baseballs. And on Twitter, we'll post the link to the video, and you just need to retweet and follow the Twitter page, and we'll pick a random winner that way as well. Um, Jake, again, thank you so much, dude. It's been awesome catching up. We'll, we'll stay in touch, I'm sure. And if I don't speak to you in this manner, face-to-face -face or anything anytime soon, best of luck this year. I'll be sure to get to the first game I can, man. Thank you. It's been fun. You know, I'm always happy to do these, these interviews. So anytime you need me, give me a shout. Jake, you're the man. Thank you so much, and good luck. You got it. Thanks. Thanks.